What's going on guys? Welcome back. New video, new car today, and another Holden, but this one's not powered by a Ford. So guys, we've got ourselves here a factory manual 5 litre VR Commodore. Big fan of the old Holden V8s. They are, I reckon, one of the best sounding V8s ever made. Uh, although, getting power out of them is like drawing blood from a stone. They are just such a nice, nice sounding car. So, the owner of this car absolutely loves it. As you can see, it's quite a clean example. It's a really cool car, but at this stage, from what we know, it is just a stock 5 litre. From what we understand, there's no modifications done at all. So we are going to be doing a complete cam kit, cam upgrade, similar to what, to what we would do to an LS, but we're doing it with a, a 5 litre Holden engine instead. Uh, we are also giving this car a whole heap of Haltech gear for a nice big upgrade, big surprise. So Haltech actually do a plug-in ECU for these 5 litre V8s. It's a platinum plug-in and we've also got a IC7, dual channel wideband, heaps of other goodies going in this thing. So it's going to be pretty sick. So first things first, got to get a baseline, see how much power it's putting down at the moment. To do that, we're going to have to get the ET streets off this thing. As we all know, ET streets do not like being on the dyno. So it's a bit more lock. That's looking more combo-ish. Way better. So Rex has predicted that the old 5 litres of Fury will put out about 220 wheel horsepower. You, you said 200, so I'm going to say 200. Yeah, I reckon, I reckon maybe 200. I'm pretty sure like the, like this has got a, a, I think it might be a club sport intake. I'm pretty sure the clubbies were a 185 kilowatt, which would be through a T5. Uh, I'd say it must be roughly 200 wheel horsepower-ish. So anyway, I'm saying 200, Rex is saying 220. Let's have a look. There you have it guys, 225 wheel horsepower. So that's, um, I suppose, fairly standard really. Uh, like, yeah, hopefully we can do a bit better. Obviously the old five, five liters and no powerhouses, it's still not gonna be, you know, a powerhouse. It's not like we're camping in LS, but uh, we should be able to get a little bit more pepper than that. So the story of this is the owner came to us, he wanted to do uh, basically a, a as much upgrade as his budget would get him. Um, and he, he had a very realistic budget for what he wanted to do with this thing. Uh, even with what we're doing, I think we're still underneath what his budget was originally to actually what he wanted to do. So there was enough in the budget to do something like uh, an intake manifold, like a good uh, single plane intake. Uh, there's a few things like that that really do help these things along. We even considered maybe doing some uh, ported heads, getting some ported heads for it. Uh, so. That was all on the cards, but the issue we have is because of COVID, you can't get any of that stuff. Uh, we had a hard enough time even getting the cam kit and what we wanted. Uh, the cam that we're gonna be putting in this thing is not even our first choice of what we wanted to do. The first choice of the cam we wanted, we are gonna have to wait for 
freaking ages. I can't remember how long it was for, but uh, it was. Got, well, we're going to have to wait for way too long. So the cam, it's still going to be awesome. Still going to be a nice little cam. Uh, it's just not. It's not the cam that we wanted to put in originally. But uh, so we decided to go to Haltech because there was the budget for it. So hopefully down the track one day when uh, we can get a hold of some more stuff, we do intend on doing uh, like an upgraded intake manifold and a few other bits and bobs. But at the moment, it's pretty much going to be, as you see it, just going to be upgrading all the top end stuff in the engine. So, and obviously the ECU. So that's our baseline. Let's get it. Right, oh guys, so we're finally getting to crack on with the VR. We are a little bit later than we wanted to. We've had a bit of an annoying week. And because of this thing not having parts that were required, it's ended up back here earlier than it was meant to. So we've had to use this hoist for this thing and it's just really screwed our weeks up. But anyway, we're getting into it now. This is our new gear that's going in the engine. Uh, most of it is from Pro Cams. We've got all new gaskets. We've got our new rockers, new rocker studs, guide plates for our new rockers, timing chain, a new cam. We've got our new valve springs, lifters. Um, yeah, heaps of cool stuff that we'll show you as we go along the way. Uh, but, you know, basically just a top end refresh on this thing with a little cam. It's not going to set the world on fire, this this thing, but the 5 liters are a really cool car. It is still only a T5 as well, you know, they're not the strongest gearbox and everything else. So, um, it's just going to be a really nice sounding, staunch iron line. Right, oh guys, Rex has been smacking out this VR. So, uh, spoiled getting to work on LSs so often that it's... Uh, Frustrating every time you to work on anything else because it's always so much more complicated than an LS is But uh, we've got this thing apart down to a short engine down to where it needs to be. Yeah, the Rex has still got to clean everything <laughs> <laughs> oh, Not we Rex has to clean it. I uh, see. I see. Nah, Rex did find some weird stuff pulling it apart though The dizzy cap had been put on literally 180 degrees out. So I'm gonna just Sort of shoved it on there. Obviously they had the leads to suit but it meant that the dizzy cap couldn't lock into its rope rotating where it was meant to uh, which means there was no way for the timing to be locked properly who knows what the time was doing but anyway might pick up heaps of power when we uh get some timing in it or something like that we'll find out but anyway that happens do some cleanup get these heads to the machine shop and start dialing through the bits that are going back into this thing a bit more in depth Alrighty guys, so we've got these heads ready to go to the machine shop. We've got the guide plates ready to go as well because we're going to have to get the heads machined for the guide plates. A um, few bits and bobs there we're going to have to get the machine shop to do. Also going to get them to chuck them in the acid wash as well. Just because they're iron and they're filthy, it would be nice to just give them a nice acid bath. So that's all getting done at Kingato in the Nango. They do quite a bit of machine work there. It's pretty awesome to have them quite close to us. So we should over there and drop these off. And we'll see you on the next episode where we're starting to put all this back together. Take care guys. Peace out. See you, bye.